everyone. I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a testimony of your story for His glory. He is an internationally recognized speaker, writer, teacher, and award-winning author of several books, some of which include Seven Keys to Hearing God's Voice, I Am Cyrus, Harry S. Truman and the Rebirth of Israel, Forward, The Leadership Principles of Ulysses S. Grant, and the brilliant follow-up, Victor, The Final Battle of Ulysses S. Grant, and more. And now, in a departure from history, so to speak, we dive right into faith, without which, no doubt, history would ever be made. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome back to Testimony, 35-year media veteran of television and radio, now serving as director of digital content for FocusOnTheFamily.com, as well as contributing writer for the Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN.com, Charisma Magazine, and others, and this just for starters. This doctor of ministry from Regent University with a Master of Arts in Journalism is fulfilling his call, as you will soon hear in his latest must-read, Walking in Faith, the Peter Paul and Mary Principal, which we will talk about today. Please welcome Dr. Craig Von Busick. Craig, sir, welcome back to Testimony. Well, thank you, Josine. It's so good to be here, and I appreciate you having me on your program again. Well, it's completely my honor. Before we begin, I have to share, I loved Walking in Faith, which came at a time for me when I was recovering from two major surgeries, and your book was the uplift and inspiration for what I could not do. But what I could do was read and read I did, and with that, my endorsement, I was asked and honored to give in support, and I quote in part, quote, In his latest revelatory read, Walking in Faith, the Peter, Paul, and Mary principle, historical writer, award-winning author, teacher, encourager, and so much more, Dr. Craig Von Busick takes the reader on an all-too-common, yet uncommon, topic of discussion, quote, Walking in Faith, and puts real and compassionate skin on it with biblical heroes whose story could be any one of us, and is. Whether seasoned in your faith, a new beginner, or still wondering if this quote, Jesus, is real at all, you will wonder no more, and instead be blessed with the knowing that you too can truly walk in faith, spiritually, practically, and in every way, a great read, a needed read, a classic for the ages, and real hope for today. And this, just one of the many endorsements, most notably from director and creator of the mega-hit TV series, The Chosen, Dallas Jenkins, who had this to say, and I quote in part, this book is so important and Dr. Craig is the brilliant thinker and servant required to deliver it, end quote. That said, Dr. Craig Von Busick, first question. How did you come to write Walking in Faith, the Peter, Paul, and Mary principle? And what principles do each of these characters represent for each of us? Well, you know, the Bible says, and first of all, thank you again for your very kind uh, and encouraging endorsement. It was it was so humbling for me to receive that. But going back, uh, Scripture says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so we need to be continually in the Word, studying uh, to, as Paul said to Timothy, to show ourselves approved a workman who does not need to be ashamed, 
that rightly divides the word of truth. And a lot of times when I'm teaching uh, biblical teaching, I will try to flip those scripture verses to look at it from the other side. So if Paul is saying that we can rightly divide the word of truth by studying to show ourselves approved, he is also saying by implication, if we do not study to show ourselves approved, we can wrongly divide the word of truth. And so that is why it's so important for us to remain in his word, even as Jesus said, if it's an if-then statement, just like the old basic programming back when we were kids for computers, (laughs) if-then. If you remain in my word, he said, then you are my disciples. Disciples meaning disciplined followers. The root word of disciple is discipline. Then you are my disciples indeed. Then, so there's the if and then the then, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Out in the world they say the truth will set you free, but that's not the complete thought that Jesus gave. What Jesus said is if you remain in my word, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so it was during a a time of Bible study years ago, way back in the 90s, that I was looking through Scripture, uh, just doing my, you know, regular daily Bible reading, and I came across this uh, passage uh, where Jesus calls Peter to walk out uh, onto the water. You know, we know the whole story that, the disciples are in the boat. They're out in the middle of uh, the Sea of Galilee. The storm has arisen, and they're afraid. And all of a sudden, they see this figure walking towards them. And I'm reading this, and all of a sudden, I start to see a pattern uh, that is there. And that is what uh, I call the Peter, Paul, and Mary principle. So it started with Peter uh, in the boats, and Jesus uh, calls him to walk on the water. Then the next uh, scenario I saw was Saul on the road to Damascus, but Peter, Saul, and Mary doesn't sound as catchy as <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Paul, and Mary. Right. So I changed it to the later version of uh, his name of Paul, but the actual event happened when he was still being known as, uh, was known as, Paul, as Saul on the road to Damascus. Right. And Saul is on his way to persecute and possibly even in prison and kill uh, followers of Jesus, and he has an encounter with the supernatural presence of Jesus Christ. And then the final part of that is young uh, Mary uh, in Nazareth, the backwater ca- a community that everybody derides and says, how can anything good come out of Nazareth? How silly they were. The most good of all that ever was came out of Nazareth. Uh, but it all started with this encounter between Mary and and the angel Gabriel. And I saw in all three of these encounters this amazing principle of faith. And what it does, and what the purpose of the book is, is to help those who want to grow in faith to learn kind of this principle to see how to unlock an understanding of faith by going through uh, this principle that uh, is found in Scripture. Amen and amen, and it's beautifully done. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Dr. Craig Von Busick on his latest Walking in Faith, the Peter, Paul, and Mary Principle. Next question. Of the three, Peter, Paul, and Mary, which most resembles your own faith walk and why? (laughs) Well, that's very interesting. Uh, I would say uh, Paul. Um, it's, it's fascinating because way back in the early 1990s, I was an associate pastor at a local church in my hometown of Erie, Pennsylvania, and um, someone had purchased for me a book called uh, Biblical Customs of Ancient Times, and it was a fascinating book, and I was just eating it up as I was reading through this to see different customs and and what their meaning was and, and how it applied to us today. And uh, I came across uh, in the reading the section on Moses. And I found that Moses was, uh, you know, part of the court of Pharaoh. He was highly educated. Um, even though he was Hebrew, he didn't realize that until later. 
And uh, at some point he had that revelation, but he grew up um, being prepared basically to possibly be the Pharaoh. And I thought, oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, uh, education, higher education, that, that may be important. And so then I keep reading through and I get to the section on the Apostle Paul. And it was the same thing, highly educated. And through that education and through the intense training, you know, he trained at the foot of Gamaliel, who Josephus called one of the greatest uh, Hebrew teachers of the first century. And so uh, Paul, or Saul at the time, was a disciple of this great teacher. And what was happening, I believe, uh, is that the Holy Spirit was speaking to my heart and was saying, this is a road I want you to walk on as well. And so mm-hmm. I identify with Paul, with his education, with his uh, experience, and now on the other side of the journey, you know, 30-plus uh, years later, uh, to a certain extent uh, with some of the persecution and challenges, because if you're going to walk in ministry, if you're going to strive to walk in obedience, well then, you know, you're going to have, as Jesus said, in this world you're going to have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen and amen. What a great answer. And I think all of us listening in ministry can comport Completely. Um, Next question. You were a chaplain for a season, which you relay in your book, Walking in Faith, of a woman on her deathbed, and your response that will bring one to tears, and it did me in the reading of it, and just how God is faithful, no matter our faith, our circumstances, to reach us with His love through those that are hearing his voice. Can you explain? Yeah, that was such a precious moment, and I was so honored to be uh, involved, and it was just the the leading of the Holy Spirit. As a chaplain, you uh, carry either a a cell phone or a pager, uh, because whenever there is someone who is uh, needing to speak to a chaplain or there is an emergency or someone is dying or there's a new birth, whatever it may be, they need to get a hold of you. So I received this page and I went and looked on the computer to see what, what it was going on because you always want to kind of orient yourself and prepare for what the, the situation is. And it said, uh, you know, a woman is angry with God and she wants to talk to a chaplain. And I thought, okay, well, <laughs> Very common story, right? And there are a lot of people who are angry with God. So, you know, as I'm yeah. going, I'm just asking the Holy Spirit, you know, to speak through me. And quite often, even when we uh, started this interview, I prayed, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. I was praying that as I was going along and asking the Holy Spirit to lead the conversation. So I got there and it was this uh, woman who was in her late 50s and she had gone through one difficult uh, health crisis after another. And she had this degenerative disease which uh, had confined her to a bed and also to, um, to a lot of hospital visitations. And she said she was angry with God because all of her friends and relatives who were, you know, around her age were able to go on vacation. They were able to see their children. They were able to work a normal job, have a quote unquote normal life, whatever that is. And, um, and she was angry because she was enduring, uh, this, uh, health crisis and this challenge. And, you know, the important thing for us, uh, when we're ministering to people is not to be so quick to give an answer. The important thing is to listen and to allow them to pour their heart out, just as David did. You know, he would pour in the midst of being chased by Saul or being rejected by his wife or being rejected and betrayed by his son. All these different terrible things that happened to King David. He would pour out his lament before the Lord. And this lady was basically doing that, even though I was kind of the representative of the Lord, uh, which is... Second Corinthians chapter 5, we're called to be ministers of reconciliation because God has entrusted us with that ministry. 
because he's in the process of reconciling sinful and lost people to himself. He loves the world so much that he uses people like you and me and those who are listening to this uh, interview. And so I was there first to listen, to take it in, and then to kind of share. So I shared a few of the you know, things that challenges that I had gone through. And I was actually going through a major life challenge right at that moment. And I shared that with her. And I think it was helpful for her to see that, you know, other people go through a lot of crazy things as well. And so at the end of about an hour of us dialoguing back and forth, she said, well, I'm still kind of angry at God, but I, but I believe. I said, well, that's a good place. You know, the Bible talks about if your faith is even the size of a grain of a mustard seed that God can use that and it will grow and he honors it. So we prayed together and I said, listen, if you need to talk further, you know, let me know. So two days went by and I get another page, same room, same lady. I thought, Oh, I wonder what this is. (laughs) And I found out that she was actually in the process of actively dying. And so I, I went to the room and she was already in a coma already, uh, in the process of what's called agonal breathing, um, which is part of the death struggle. And so I walked over, and one of the things that I learned in my training is that people in a coma can hear you. And that has been proven uh, again and again. And so I would always, if someone was in a coma or was in the process of dying, I would talk to them as though they were awake and, and watch and hearing me. And so I just said to her, hey, you know, this is Chaplain Craig. I was here the other day, and we talked and we prayed together. I want you to know I'm here with you right now. You're not alone. Your nurse is also here, but most importantly, Jesus is here with you. And he loves you, and his arms are open wide. And so I quoted some scripture, you know, uh, 23rd Psalm and some other passages that I knew were comforting. And then what I like to do is uh, to sing some hymns. So I sang Palm of Gilead, and then I started to sing uh, Amazing Grace, and the nurse said, oh, that's my favorite. Can I sing along? I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're singing Amazing Grace in this room. And then I started to quote, uh, that was when I came to the 23rd Psalm. And I started to quote the 23rd Psalm. And I had had my hand, uh, holding her hand, clasping, uh, it and when I got to the uh, scripture that says, "Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death," she squeezed my hand very tightly, hmm. and I said, "Yes, you hear this, don't you? Yes, the Lord is with you." And then I said, "He is there. Look for him, and he's got his arms open wide. You run to him when he calls you." And um, and then after I went on from that verse to the rest of the chapter, her hand weakened again. And then I got another page and I had to leave. And so I said, listen, I've got to go talk to another patient, but I'll be back. And your nurse is here. But most importantly, Jesus is here. So you follow his voice. And I left. And by the time I got back, she had passed away and uh, she was gone. And so that was just a precious moment of being someone. I always felt very privileged and honored to help to usher people into the arms of Jesus. And it was one of those wonderful moments. Wow, that is just beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Dr. Craig Von Busick in his latest must-read, Walking in Faith. We need more time for your wonderful stories. Uh, But next question uh, with the remaining time that we have. Another example of walking in faith, as you recount in your latest great read, was the time when Dr. Pat Robertson, founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network, while eating a scrumptious meal of cantaloupe and cottage uh, cheese, uh, would hear the words from God, no doubt, quote, I want you to build me a university, end quote. That's all it took, and the rest, as they say, is history, hence Regent University, from where you received your doctorate. But wait, uh, there's more. Saying yes was not enough, as the scriptures state, faith without works is dead. 
Can you expound? Absolutely. You know, Paul talks about us being co-laborers with Jesus Christ. And there are some people who don't really understand that uh, hearing the direction or the leading of the Holy Spirit is the, it's merely the starting point. And then we need to act on that thing. And then what, what happens is that we go on a really a lifelong journey with the Lord because we will obey by his grace, step out in faith and obey to do what God calls us to do, which then leads us to another plateau. And that, and then we have another encounter with the Lord and he gives us further direction. And so that's why the Bible calls it ever increasing faith, uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. The Psalm says that the, the light of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which grows brighter and brighter until full day. And so it is a constant um, hearing, stepping out in faith, testing it. Sometimes we may miss it and we may stumble. But that's why Psalm 37, 23, and 24 is such a precious promise. In verse 23, it says, The steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in our way. And then the next verse, verse 24, is kind of like the safety net. When we stumble, when we may miss it, when we may, you know, be walking in sin and we need to repent, or just, you know, we just make a mistake because we're human. And that says, even if we stumble, this is verse 24, even if we stumble, we will not be utterly cast down because he upholds us with his hand. And so in the case of Dr. Robertson, uh, you know, working, I worked at CBN and Regent for 15 years. And so uh, this is part of the lore, part of the narrative of CBN and Regent is the cottage cheese and cantaloupe story or cantaloupe <laughs> and cottage cheese. Yeah. You know, he was in uh, Anaheim, California, across the street from Disneyland. He was at a, a conference. And he bowed his head uh, to pray for his breakfast, and the Holy Spirit started to speak to him and said, raise up a ministry or a, a university for my glory. And so he would often say, I didn't go home and sit on the porch in a rocking chair and say, okay, God, where's the university? When's the university going to be raised up? And, right. Hey, how come I'm not seeing any professors? Where are all the students? He said, no. I went back and I started looking into the legalities of what it takes to start a university. I started... Uh, raising money. I started meeting with experts. I started interviewing professors and deans and administrators. We started looking at property. And from those that small beginning, uh, grew one of the great universities in the United States, uh, Christian universities, and one of the greatest Christian universities, uh, in my opinion, in the whole world. Uh, but it begins with obedience to the leading of the Lord, because faith, as you said, without works is dead. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you're listening to Dr. Craig Von Busick in his latest must-read, Walking in Faith. Craig, what is the number one reason, your view, why more Christians, or anyone for that matter, do not, quote, walk in faith, without which the Word tells us we cannot even please God? Yeah, I think that it is the opposite uh, extreme of faith is fear. And so I believe that it is fear that hinders people. And part of that comes um, from what Jesus spoke about in the parable of the sower. The sower sows the seed and it falls onto different kind of ground. And so in one place it talks about the seed falling onto hard ground because you've been wounded or you've been betrayed or you've not had uh, your prayers answered the way you think that they should be answered. And so your heart becomes rocky and that's that hard soil. Another place it says the soil fell among thorns and thistles and weeds and the cares of the world uh, grew up and choked out the good plants. And so uh, that's why it's so important. You know, scripture says, Do not neglect the gathering together of yourself with other believers. And it also speaks about the importance of having those godly relationships. You know, I always tell people that I'm counseling or teaching, uh, who is your Paul? And then the next question I ask is, who is your Timothy? 
you know, we always need to have someone who's a little bit more mature, a little bit ahead of us in the ways of the Lord that we look to for counsel and mentorship and, you know, questions answered and so forth. But then we also need to always be looking at who has God placed into our lives that we can be a mentor to as well. And it is in those uh, relationships of accountability, those relationships of encouragement, those relationships where we can pray for each other, where we can just keep each other accountable and, and uh, you know, on the right track. I think that's where we can keep our heart from getting hard or keep our heart from being caught up in the concerns and the fears of life. And instead, we can walk in faith and see God's dynamic breakthrough in our lives. Amen and amen. And as we close this broadcast today, Dr. Craig Von Busick, you have dedicated your book, Walking in Faith, to your sister, and I quote Mm -hmm. in part, to my sister Erin Von Busick staff, like Peter, you have weathered life's storms by keeping your eyes on Jesus. Like Paul, you have been knocked down, but you rose up and obeyed the call of God. Like Mary, you may not have always understood, but you responded to God's leading with, quote, be it unto me according to your word, end quote. I am inspired by the way you continue to shine the light of Jesus in darkness with much love. Dr. Craig Von Busick, what a beautiful tribute and compassionate encouragement for us all. Final thoughts. Well, I have tears in my eyes, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, because this is uh, my youngest sister who has struggled since her early teens with her walk with the Lord. But my father, Clemens von Buzik, he had a prayer journal. And after he passed away, we found this in his art studio. He was a wonderful portrait painter. And this was in his art studio. It was a three ring binder. And he would write down prayers for his children and for his wife, my mom, and for other loved ones. And uh, my sister found this, my youngest sister found this, and uh, hers was the thickest chapter (laughs) with the most pages of prayers of any of us. Um, because she needed the most prayer. And my father, thank God, was faithful to pray for her. And about five years ago, um, she rededicated her life to the Lord. And now she does all kinds of work with, uh, you know, addiction recovery and counseling uh, with young people. And um, she's a professor at a university And it's just so, you know, because she's been through very, very dark times in her life. And she will tell you that a lot of those were because of her own choices and the consequences of those choices. And yet God's grace is sufficient and his mercies are new every morning. And she has come through. And now all those things she lived through, she's using to minister to others. And I think that that's what God uh, does in all of our lives if we will allow him to is that he takes those things and he turns the darkness into the dawn. He turns the morning into dancing. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to award-winning author, speaker, a writer, media veteran of television and radio, and so much more, Dr. Craig Von Busick, who's recently released Walking in Faith, is a must read. You can learn more about Dr. Von Busick's work, ministry, and mission by visiting vonbusick.com and get his book, Get Encouraged, and get the hope you need to truly walk in faith as Peter, Paul, and Mary did, and courageously so. Dr. Von Busick, Craig, sir, thank you so much for sharing your revelatory insights with all of us and how we too can truly walk in faith as you have beautifully penned in your walking in faith the peter paul and mary principle so clearly 
and compassionately explained. We thank you, and God bless you. Well, thank you, and God bless you. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Jensen. Take care. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D.com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensen Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony. Testimony.